If you've only just joined us, Merry Christmas, Nadali Klawen. This is BBC One Wales with the news now, presented by Clive Myrie. Good evening. Police have arrested a man who was armed with a weapon in the grounds of Windsor Castle as the Queen and members of the royal family gathered for Christmas. The arrest took place this morning, but the details are still emerging. Well, our royal correspondent, Sarah Campbell, is with me. So what more do we know about what happened, Sarah? Well, the palace had made it known that the Queen was due to spend this, her first Christmas since the death of her husband, with members of the family at Windsor Castle. So Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, were filmed walking to St George's Chapel shortly before 11 o'clock this morning. And we now know that a little more than two hours before that, a teenager had managed to get in the castle grounds with what the police have called an offensive weapon. Now, it's been widely reported this evening that the man was carrying a crossbow that hasn't been confirmed by the police what they have said is that the alarm was raised within moments of him entering the grounds that he didn't enter any buildings and that the royal family were informed now a 19 year old man from Southampton is now in custody an investigation is underway into exactly what happened and how someone with a weapon could have breached castle security sure okay Sarah thank you Sarah Campbell there well, news of the arrest emerged this afternoon as the Queen's first Christmas message since the death of Prince Philip was being broadcast. She paid tribute to her late husband, describing him as her beloved, and said she felt his presence this festive period. Here's Nicholas Witchell. Windsor Castle on Christmas morning. The Royal Standard signifying that the Queen was in residence. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. The Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall joined the congregation at St George's Chapel for morning service. The Queen, though, did not attend as a precaution against Covid, according to officials. From the very first moments of the Queen's broadcast, there was a keen sense of the loss she's felt over the death of Prince Philip last April after their 73 years of marriage. Although it's a time of great happiness and good cheer for many, Christmas can be hard for those who have lost loved ones. This year especially, I understand why. But for me, in the months since the death of my beloved Philip, I have drawn great comfort from the warmth and affection of the many tributes to his life and work, from around the country, the Commonwealth, and the world. His sense of service, intellectual curiosity, and capacity to squeeze fun out of any situation were all irrepressible. That mischievous, inquiring twinkle was as bright at the end as when I first set eyes on him. She spoke about the happiness she gained from seeing members of her family embracing the roles and values which meant so much to her and she recalled how her husband's work on the environment was being taken forward. I am proud beyond words that his pioneering work has been taken on and magnified by our eldest son, Charles, and his eldest son, William, admirably supported by Camilla and Catherine. While COVID again means we can't celebrate quite as we may have wished. There was a passing reference to COVID and a look ahead to the Platinum Jubilee. But this, above all, was a broadcast from a wife mourning her husband. There would still be joy at Christmas, the Queen said, even with one familiar laugh missing. So, a very personal message from the Queen at the end of a sad and in some ways rather troubling year with the death of her husband and difficulties within the royal family. The year has also ended with concerns about her own health, concerns which the palace does its best to downplay, preferring instead to look ahead to next year and the Platinum Jubilee. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, at Buckingham Palace. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, in his Christmas message, has called for compassion for asylum seekers trying to cross the Channel. He said the story of Joseph and Mary is searching for shelter demonstrates the need to treat those who risk everything to arrive on the beaches with compassion. There have been the volunteers who have been on my mind, welcoming and caring for refugees arriving on the beaches so close to this cathedral. 
And those volunteers are extraordinary people, especially the crews of the RNLI. And they do one thing, save life at sea. Pope Francis has warned that the world is becoming so desensitized to bad news and suffering that numerous crises are barely noticed. In his Christmas Day message, he pointed to ongoing turmoil in Syria, Yemen and Iraq, as well as in parts of Africa, Europe and Asia. He also said the effects of the coronavirus pandemic threatened efforts to resolve international conflicts. A number of vaccination centres stayed open in England today as the government continued with its drive to offer everyone a booster jab by the new year. The most recent figures show just over 56% of those who are eligible have had a third vaccine dose. Here's Emily Unia. Redbridge Town Hall in East London is one of a small number of vaccination centres in England that opened this morning on Christmas Day to help bolster the booster programme. Fantastic idea to, to come to save so many lives. My job, I'm in uh, contact with customers all the time. Um, so, you know, I've got to keep myself safe, keep my customers safe. The government's aim was to offer all adults a booster by the end of the year. Even with festive jabs, it's likely to fall short. The crux of it is it's family time. It's time that you want to spend with your loved ones. And it's often times like that that we get to think through the real priorities. And the real priorities are that you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your loved ones. Early signs are that the new variant appears to cause milder illness, which health officials have described as a glimmer of hope. But Omicron is still spreading fast and new restrictions might be needed. We begin our celebration of this birth. In his Christmas message, the head of the Catholic Church in England called on the government to keep places of worship open. I think we're at that point of saying we understand the risks, we know what we should do, most people are, are sensible and cautious. We don't need stronger impositions to teach us what to do, we know. If we want to avoid restrictions, then widespread take-up of the vaccine is vital. This pharmacy in North London had a very personal reason for opening at Christmas. I'm very close to the owners of this shop, um, the original owner Nilesh Patel. He actually passed away from COVID uh, January this year and um, it was a horrible experience for his family. At the end of a year which began with a lockdown, the country is once again on the brink of a full-scale return to tighter restrictions. Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have already brought in new rules on indoor mixing. England could follow suit next week. Emily Unia, BBC News. The former England cricket captain Ray Illingworth has died. He was 89 and had been undergoing treatment for cancer. Beautifully hooked by Illingworth. In an international career that spanned three decades, he was famously carried from the field by teammates, having led England to victory in a fractious, bad-tempered Ashes series in Australia in 1971. He later became chairman of the selectors and coached England in the 1990s. Now, the most ambitious space telescope ever built has gone into orbit with the hope that it will beam back unprecedented images of the universe. The James Webb Telescope took 30 years to develop at a cost of $10 billion and launched from French Guyana. It's the successor to the Hubble Telescope, as our science editor, Rebecca Morell, explains. And we have engine start. And lift off. The start of a blockbuster astronomy mission. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Inside this rocket is the biggest telescope ever sent into space. It was a big sigh of relief that things are actually moving in the way that they're supposed to for this mission, but a huge amount of excitement for, you know, what's to come. This space telescope is a feat of engineering. At its heart is a six and a half meter wide mirror made up of 18 hexagonal segments, each coated in a layer of gold. Its size means it can detect the incredibly faint light coming from the most distant stars. It also has a huge sun shield about the size of a tennis court. It's made up of five layers, each as thin as a human hair. And this protects the telescope from the heat and light of the sun. Sitting a million miles away from the Earth, the telescope will give us our deepest ever view of the cosmos, from seeing the birth of the very first stars and galaxies to revealing new planets in far-flung solar systems.
The telescope's so big it's been folded up to fit inside the rocket. The most challenging part is getting it to unfurl. There are 300 points where it could go wrong. Separation Web Space Telescope. Go Web! The most ambitious astronomy mission ever has now begun. And our view of the universe is about to be transformed. Rebecca Morell, BBC News. That's it from all of us here at BBC News. Merry Christmas and have a very good night. Thank you.